Hey everybody, Ross Greenstein here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to be a part of the College Week Live Sports Week. Um, if you guys don't know much about me, uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Scholarship for Athletes, which is a consulting company for high school athletes and their families. I'm also the founder of Scholarly Life, which is a online video series that we put together to help student athletes and their families through the recruiting process. Uh, real excited to kind of share with you guys one aspect uh, of the college recruiting process today. If you guys have any questions at all throughout the process, please just type them in. We're happy to answer them. Uh, looks like we'll be together for about an hour here. Uh, put together a, a short PowerPoint presentation. It's got some video in it. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something today. So enjoy it and um, just ask questions and uh, I'll answer them. So let's start with the PowerPoint. It's um, Scholarly Life, College Week Live. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the facts of college recruiting. We're going to talk about Scholarly Life, what it is, kind of what the whole video series is about. And then we'll talk about the three things uh, that student athletes must consider as they go through the recruiting process. Some facts. So every high school athlete can play college athletics. And what we mean by that is that if you're a high school athlete and, and you're competing at a high level, you're playing your sport, you're training off the field, there is a college out there for you, whether it's D1, D2, D3, junior college, or NAIA. We've never had a college athlete, that, or a high school athlete, that wanted to be a college athlete not be able to do that. Now, obviously, we understand that not every student athlete can go to every school they want to go to, but if you want to play college sports, I guarantee you there is a college team out there that would love to have you. Uh, recruiting process is highly competitive. Uh, I think most people know that there's you know, much higher demand than there is supply. Uh, there's hundreds of thousands of athletes from all over the world that would like to play college athletics every year and all the athletes out there are competing for very few scholarships and roster spots so it is very competitive um, we view the recruiting process very differently than I think every other company out there that I've seen and we look at it as a real-life job interview uh, what that means is that the college coaches are looking to hire student athletes whether for a roster spot or for a scholarship and we consider it a job interview so the student athletes are looking for a job they're looking for a roster spot they're looking for a scholarship and the college coaches are looking to hire if you agree with us that it is a job interview and the student athletes and their parents treat this as a job interview then the process can be you know pretty smooth as long as they just listen to what we need to do. Now the Scholarly Life, if you go to scholarlylife.com and you check out the videos, what we've done is we've taken the job interview from A to Z. So what is the recruiting process all the way to the end of the job interview? Um, we put that together um, to make it pretty easy, a step-by-step -step guide. The biggest decision for young adults, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about they meet their husbands and wives and from college, uh, what you study might end up being the field you go into. For student athletes, it's a huge decision because a lot of their college experience is based off how happy or unfortunately how unhappy they are with their sport. So for college athletes, obviously this is a huge decision. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I was lucky to receive a scholarship to the University of Florida to play tennis. Um, after college, I, I created Scholarship for Athletes, which is our consulting company. Uh, we founded that in 2004. Since then, we've helped thousands of athletes from all over the world go through the recruiting process. And our athletes are at all different schools. Highest level of Division One, Ivy League schools, um, D2, D3 highest academic division threes. We even have student athletes that go to junior college and NAIA. 
So we, we've had a good variety of sports and athletic levels, academic levels, uh, since we've started the company. And then in 2012, last year, I founded Scholarly Life. And um, everything is going well. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy working with the student athletes and their families. It's something I'm extremely passionate about. And uh, the student athletes are really fun to work with. All right, Scholarly Life. And so the job interview. Um, high school athletes are looking for a job. This is what I talked about. College coaches are looking to hire. Uh, again, I think it's really important for parents and student athletes to understand that that's what the recruiting process is. What is the job interview? How does it work? Obviously, there's a lot of details there. But if you understand that it's a job interview, and if you're an adult, and you've been through a successful job interview, or you know what a successful job interview looks like, you should be able to help your son or daughter through the process. So we got a little trivia here. Um, first correct answer, if you type it in, that would be great um, for all the people participating. What three things must high school athletes do to receive the best job offer? If you guys have any guesses, that would be awesome. Three things high school athletes need to do to receive the job offer. Any participants? Samantha? Got any guesses? Okay, Rebecca said register for eligibility center. Um, yes, that is something you need to do to be eligible. Um, so you are correct, but I wouldn't say that's what's going to get you the best job offer. That will get you eligible to compete. Any other guesses? What do you do so that the coach hires you at, the, at your top, top school? Get the best job offer. Any other guesses? All right, I'll give you the answer. Here it is. First thing you got to do is network, which means you've got to get to know college coaches, high school coaches, athletes, current college athletes. The bigger your network is in the recruiting business, the better job offer you're going to get. So that means for your student athletes out there, start building friends, whether it's Facebook, email, with college coaches, maybe you want to go to their school, maybe you don't. It can be local college coaches, local college athletes, friends of yours, friends of your family. Just start networking. Anybody in this field, in this industry of college athletics is great. It's going to help you a lot. Two is building relationships, which means after you've networked with these people, you want to build relationships with them. And so what we're talking about is after you maybe meet your local college coach, so let's say you're a volleyball player, you might not want to go to your local college, but if you build a very good relationship with your local college volleyball coach and they know you and they know your family, that coach will someday help you. They can be answer your questions about the recruiting process and maybe they'll pick up the phone someday and say, hey, I've known this girl or boy for three, four years. I've known the family. They're a great kid. They didn't want to come to our school or they're not a fit for us, but they would be a great fit for you. And so really important that we network and build a big list of people we can get to know and ask questions and then build that relationship so we can ask them favors as we go through the process. So I always say you should network with hundreds of people but if you build relationships with 10 people, 10 college coaches and 10 college athletes, that will help any student athlete get the right job. Number three, interview effectively. Something I've talked about before. Um, interviewing effectively is very important. Uh, it means writing thank you notes. It means following up on emails. It means when a coach calls you, you call them back. It means when you go visit a school, you thank the people you've met on your visit. Um, you ask the right questions. There's probably a hundred things I could tell you to do to interview effectively. But the three main things, if you get anything out of this talk today, is you're doing the job interviews. You got to know how to network, got to build relationships, you got to interview effectively. If you have questions about how to do those things, 
You could go to scholylife.com at any time, um, sign up. Some of the videos are free. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, you know, YouTube. We've got interviews on YouTube. All that stuff will help you with those three things. All right, here comes, it looks like, the first video. To pick the best university for your son or daughter, it's important to have a clear understanding of what kind of college experience your child is looking for. This means understanding the big three factors in college athletics. These include academics, athletics, and social. There are a number of different variables to consider when looking at schools. For example, the coaching staff, athletes on the team, practice sessions, playing time, and scholarship money. Because every college program offers a different balance between the big three, it's important to understand what balance the college program is offering. For instance, if you are looking for a new job opportunity, you would look at a number of factors. For example, the number of hours employees work, the amount of travel that is expected, and the amount of time you would receive off. Similar to a full-time job, high school athletes looking to commit to university for the next four years of their lives need to seek out the right balance. Um, Rebecca, I do not know why it's echoing. Let me ask Samantha real quick. Let me see if I can fix that real quickly. Um, I apologize if the video could not hear it. Kelly, was it echoing for you as well? I don't know if Samantha, if you could hear it. Let me uh, let me try it again here. Let's see. All right, we'll just move on. I'll try another video here in a second. Let me know if it's echoing. So, what we talked about in that video was the academics, athletics, and social, which are the big three in college athletics. Very important that student athletes find the right balance between academics, athletics, and social. Uh, and um, let me try one more video here, see if it's working, if it's not working. Athletes in college have very little time for anything but academics and athletic activities. For a collegiate athlete, a typical day could include practice or training in the morning, class during the day, practice and training in the afternoon, dinner and studying at night before going to bed and doing it all over again the next day. Top play. Talk with your child about the balance they are looking for in their college experience. How was that, Rebecca? Did that echo? I tried to turn the volume down as well. Okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. Understanding balance. Um, here's some here's some questions to ask your child. What is your number one priority during college? Academics, athletics, or social? Do you want to spend more time on academics or athletics? Are you prepared to sacrifice social events, joining a fraternity or sorority? traveling with friends for your athletic career. Top play. If your child is at a school where the balance is not right, they will likely be unhappy and potentially quit or transfer. Okay, so there again, we're talking about balance, about that if the balance between athletics 
and academics and social is not right. So what do we mean by that? What we mean is that if the athletics is just too much, it's too overwhelming, there's too much practice, there's too much training, there's too much traveling, it's just too intense, kids will quit and transfer. And that's normal. Um, with the academics, if they're struggling to keep up academically and the student athlete expects certain grades and they just can't keep up because of the athletics and they're not getting enough sleep, they're missing too much school, it's hard to keep up with the students in the class, if that's happening, again, students will tend to quit or transfer. Um, and so it's really important that student athletes find that balance. Now social, I tell all student athletes, you're going to have very little time for social life. But again, for some athletes, it's important. Um, some athletes do want to try to be in a fraternity or sorority or be in some kind of club. And if you're always studying or playing your sport and you have very little time for a social life, it'll get overwhelming for student athletes and that will cause them to quit or transfer. And so again, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's very important to find that balance. So we got another trivia question here. What is one way to find out the balance a university offers? So how do you find out what balance the student athletes have between academics, athletics, and social. Let's see if we get any answers here. Talk with current athletes at the school. Rebecca, very good answer. Kelly, any any guesses? All right, here's the video. Speak to your academic advisor, okay? Here's the answer, I think, if you guys can hear it. There are thousands of college athletic teams, each with a unique balance. As your child goes through the recruiting process, it's important they speak with current athletes on various teams to understand what kind of balance they have as student athletes. Rebecca, you got the answer correct, which means you get a quarter free. So make sure you contact me. You can Facebook me, email me, tweet me, at Scholarly Life. I owe you a free quarter. Great job. You got it correct. Finding the right, ba right balance between academics, athletics, and a social life is the most important part of the recruiting process. College athletics can be a fun and exciting time for a young person, but only if the balance is right. The university that your child chooses will inevitably change their life forever. My affiliation to the University of Florida goes well beyond my work life. Some of my best friends today are my old Gator teammates. Set your son or daughter up for success and help them find the right balance they're looking for. Actions to take now. Ask your child what percentage of their time as a collegiate athlete they want to dedicate to academics, athletics, and a social life. So again, that's kind of the key question of today's topic and video. Um, make sure as student athletes, you guys can change your mind throughout the process, that's okay. Um, but if you think about 100% of your time, what percent do you wanna do athletics? What percent do you wanna do academics? And what percent do you wanna do social? You can usually talk to the student athletes on the team and ask them, you know, do you spend more of your time doing athletics and traveling and in the training room and in the film room? Or do you spend more time in academics, going to class and studying um, and taking tests? and then what percentage is social. And so it's very important that whatever balance the student athletes want, there's no right or wrong answer. You just gotta make sure you find the school where the team has the balance. Now, it's important to also know that the student athletes on the team have already created the balance. So whatever the balance is, it's probably not gonna change. So now maybe as you get older and you become a junior or senior on the team and you're captain, you might have a better influence on the team. But when you show up as a freshman, whatever the culture is of the team, 
whatever the balance is that they have, that's what you're going to be walking into. So here's a kind of a top play. Talk to your child, talk to the student athletes about the balance they're looking for in their university experience. Make sure they consider universities that have the right balance. And then you can follow the scholarly guide for step-by-step -step instructions and everything your child must do to find the right university. So this video that we've kind of broken up is available at scholarlylife.com so you can watch it again. If it was echoing, it went a little quick. Um, but hopefully you guys kind of got an idea about you know, how the whole balance works. You, you got to talk to the current athletes on the team. They're the only ones that can really tell you about the balance of the team. And it's really important to think about as you go through the process, based on your major, based off the school, morning practices, afternoon practices, travel schedule, um, really keep talking to the student athletes and the coaches about the balance. If you get the balance right, probably going to have a great experience if you're playing in the games or playing in the matches. If you get the balance wrong, even if you're playing in the games or matches, you're probably going to be unhappy. And that's why I think over 50% of the kids quit and transfer. Um, questions? Any questions? It can be anything about the recruiting process. I'll answer it. It doesn't have to be about this video. It doesn't have to be about this topic. Any question you have? Come on, Callie. Come on, Rebecca. I'm here. You can ask anything you want. Is it okay to make a cold call to a coach and invite them to watch a game? So Rebecca asks if it's okay to make a cold call, just call a coach and invite them to watch a game. So Rebecca, the answer is yes, it is okay. You can call a coach at any time. Now, the answer is short answer, yes. Long answer, the college coach is not going to come watch your game unless they know you and have built a relationship with you. So it's very important that you know you find out, first of all, the coach you're calling, do you have the grades, do you have the test scores, and do you have the athletic level for that coach? Rebecca, if you can, just let me know what sport you play and what year you are in school. That'll help me answer your question as well. What sport and what year are you? Oh, it's the mom. My son's going to be a junior, and he plays basketball. Okay. So, so for your son as a basketball player, um, you, what you want to do is you want to find some schools that are interested. Um, you know, and maybe you're right. Maybe it's a D3, maybe NAI. But, again, some D3 teams, we've got basketball players at some top Division three teams, and those top three division, top division three teams will beat low-level D1 teams. So it's not so much about division. So be careful with making, you know, only looking at certain schools. But if you go to the Scholarly Guide and you watch it, what you'll see is if your son gets to know some coaches and they say to you guys, okay, yes, you know, the level for him, you know, yeah, we'd be interested. And like you said, if he's tall, every coach is looking for tall players. So... If you have him build a relationship with some coaches, he sends them his grades, his, you know, his test scores, what high school he's at, and the coach says, you know what, yeah, this is a kid we could be interested in. Your son needs to call the coach, talk to the coach, and ask them some questions. 
the big three questions that he must ask are also in the Scholarly Guide in the Scholarly Life videos. So again, I know I keep saying it, but if you go to scholarlylife.com and you watch the Scholarly Guide, it'll tell your son everything he needs to do. And then it is appropriate for him to say, hey, coach, here's my schedule. Here's where I'm going to be playing. Um, probably, you know, it's got to be a local coach. And again, it's okay if your son doesn't want to go to the uh, local school. It, don't stress about that. It's still good to have the local college coaches watch him play. Again, it's a job interview. And if the local college coach says to you, hey, Rebecca, I really like your son. He'd be a great fit for us athletically, academically. And your son decides, you know what, I'm not interested in staying close to home. I want to get away from my parents. That gives you a great idea of what other schools could be a fit. So I do recommend you ask a local coach to come watch a high school game or an AAU game or whatever he's playing in. See if you can get a reference. You can also go to a camp. College, campus are, college camps are great. Um, the coaches are there. They'll be able to watch him, obviously, and get to, get to see him play and give you guys an idea of his level. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done before you ask a college coach to come watch you play. But, yes, you should ask college coaches to say, hey, here's my schedule, here's my games. be great if you could get a chance to come watch me play. And then, obviously, if the coach does come watch, make sure your son thanks him, writes him a thank you email, um, and you can follow up from there. So hopefully I answered your question. Um, the answer is yes, but got a lot of work to do beforehand. It's a great question. Any other questions? Keep asking. Ask as many questions as you want. And did that help? Did that answer your question? Uh, yes, so Rebecca asked if you can write thank you emails instead of paper ones. Yes, college coaches today do not want uh, anything on paper. Um, always email. College coaches barely check their mail today. They'll lose it. Emails are fine, perfectly acceptable. Whether you're sending a coach a resume, do it by email. Whether you're sending them a thank you email, um, you can definitely do it by email. Thank you note. So, yes, emails are perfect. College coaches prefer it. They all have smartphones. Coaches are traveling all the time. They don't spend much time in their office. So email is always great. They always get it on their phone. Any other questions? Fire away. Got to add this slide. Um, if you guys are interested in buying the Scholarly Guide on scholylife.com, because of college, uh, college Week Live, we, we put together a 50% discount for you. So if you do decide you want the videos and you want to get the education about how to do the entire recruiting process, just go to scholylife.com and if you buy one quarter or you buy all of it, you get 50% off by typing in college week into the coupon code. So Rebecca asked, how do I find out which division one schools are not performing as well? To be honest with you, Rebecca, that's not the way I would recommend looking at colleges to start. I would look at geography. Is there a part of the country that your son would like to be in or not be in? Then I would look at academics at those schools. What are, the, what are his academics and what are some academic fits in that geography based off his grades and what he wants to study? And then if you have a list of schools in a geography academically that fit that he would go to if he was not an athlete, that's where I would start. Don't worry if it's D1, D2, D3. Don't worry about the level. Just 
take eight to ten schools that he would go to if he was not an athlete that fit you know what he's looking for academically and geography and then send the coaches an email um, if you do the email properly the resume which we again we talk about in Skylife how to do that resume add in a video um, the fact that he's six seven he's tall they probably you know might show some interest if they don't so for example there's two or three D1s and two or three D2s and two or three D3s and one NAI and one junior college, you know, you'll find out quickly um, based off their responses if they're interested. And, and if you have a video of him playing in an actual game uh, in the resume, just a quick kind of live game action, five minutes of game footage that he's playing and um, the coaches will know everything they need to know. They'll be able to say, yes, okay, we're interested. We want to learn more. Now, what's frustrating is that a lot of the coaches will not reply to the email. So um, be careful there. Uh, make sure your son follows up with a voicemail. Just like a normal job interview, if he does send the coach a resume, he's got to follow up with a phone call to make sure they received it. Um, how do I provide the video? So Rebecca asked, how do I provide the video, upload to YouTube, and give them a link? Yes, that's exactly right. Um, take a game. Maybe there was a quarter of the game or five minutes of the game live, no edits, where your son played really well. Got some rebounds, maybe blocked a two shot, maybe scored. Do not edit that and put those five live minutes, offense, defense, they can see everything and just put that in his resume with a YouTube link. Um, if you go to, if you sign in on scholylife.com, there's a resource center, talks about how to make the resume, and the resume in there will be very good. It kind of explains to you where to put the video, and you just put, hey, here's a link to my video, boom, coach clicks it, it opens up, they watch the five minutes. You need to make the resume and video as easy as possible for these college coaches. Um, they get 10,000 resumes a day, so the easier you make it, the better. Any other questions? These are all great. Actually, Rebecca, I owe you a quarter, so if I give you a quarter, first quarter, this will get you started, help you with everything you need to know. So yes, Rebecca, to, to figure out how to make the resume, what questions to ask the coaches, building relationships with the coaches, how to do everything in this whole process is very easily uh, accessible there at skylife.com. And if you type in College Week, you get 50% off. Kelly asked a question. Do you think it's a good idea to go to the same school as your siblings? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's not a good idea. Obviously, your siblings know what it's like to be a student athlete at that school. Um, if you feel like everything you've heard from them, you would enjoy it, I'd say yes. Now, the main thing I would say, Kelly, to answer the question is you've got to have something to compare it to. So... If your option is option A with your siblings, what is option B, what is option C, and what is option D? And how are they different on and off the field of play? Um, Kelly, if you tell me what sport it is, that would make it a little bit easier for me. But in general, I would say yes, there's no problem with going where your siblings are. They should know the coaches. They should know the academic advisors. They should be able to tell you exactly what it means to be a student athlete. And that will help you learn if that's the best school for you. Uh, obviously, you got to look at two, three, four other schools, learn what those schools are like on and off the field of play so that you can compare it. 
um, and then decide you know for you as an individual what's best for you you're probably a little bit different level athlete either a little bit better a little bit worse than your siblings most people aren't can't be the same um, academically probably a little bit different socially a little bit different so got to take all of those things into consideration to make sure that the school they're at is the best fit for you. Did that help? Okay, great. Um, Kelly, any other questions? Rebecca, any other questions? Okay, Rebecca, thank you for joining me. Um, just get in touch with me. You can email me, Twitter, Facebook. Um, like I said, I owe you a quarter, so we'll get in touch, and I can talk to you a little bit more about the guide. Kelly, do you have any questions? Make sure, Kelly, um, you check out skylife.com. You can watch four of the videos for free, so that'll answer a lot of your questions at no charge. Um, and if you, again, if you want help step by step, you get the 50% off with College Week. So, all right, well, it looks like um, those are all the questions. I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys learned something. Um, again, if you have questions at any time, contact me. I appreciate you guys uh, joining me.